If you've been watching the channel for a little while, then the electric Pipistrelle, the world's first commercial electric aircraft, will be familiar to you. And when we filmed that episode back in 2022, the very thought of electric flight seemed kind of extraordinary. You might want to hold on. But fast forward to today and there are some EVTOLs about to enter mass production. Battery behemoth CATL claims to be mass producing 500 watt hour per kilo batteries, the energy density largely regarded as that that's needed to make mainstream electrification of flight viable. And here on the channel, we've covered super powerful axial flux motors. Uh, we've even delved into the world of hydrogen flight. So with electric propulsion well underway, the question remains, how do you charge the things? Well, we've come here to an airfield in Devon to meet Aerovolt to find out and to see the world's first and only public electric plane charging network. Like fully charged? You'll love our fun-packed Everything Electric Expos around the world. Come and join us in Harrogate, Farnborough and Vancouver. Remember, energy and transport professionals go for free. So this is it. This is an electric plane charger. And it doesn't look that much different from an electric vehicle charge point because the technology is exactly the same. Although I will say this currently has a GBT connection rather than a CCS. Although over time, it looks like it will go through to the CCS connection. Now, the really cool thing about this is that you can see it through the Squadron app, which is the app that Aerovolt have developed, or you can see it through the Octopus Electroverse app, which also has the additional benefit Let's say you have got an electric plane, uh, you can charge it and get that charge added to your electricity bill at the end of the month. Super, super cool. Right, we're at 97% charge. Let's go flying. So Aerovolt is a reasonably new company uh, and you're reasonably early in your journey. Where are you on that journey? How many sites have you installed so far? Yeah, so Aerovolt is really new. We put our first charger in the ground in August of 2023 and here we are in April of 24. We've got seven sites live. We've got about another 75 or so in discussion at various stages. So clearly quite a pipeline. I've um... I've crashed one of these things before though. <laughs> yeah. That, that was the wind's fault though, right? Yeah, 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 totally. What speed were we talking about? 22-ish. It's quite strong. When we filmed with Robert, it was 22 knots that day. Yeah. Uh, and I'd, I'd come back from holiday, so I was flying into Heathrow. And my flight was delayed, like on a proper big massive plane, because yeah. of the wind. And then we sent Robert up in this 22 knot Pipistrelle. It was... Um, yeah, no. So you've obviously deployed a number of different charging points so far, but how many do you actually need to sort of complete the UK electric plane charging network? So in terms of full geographical coverage and a good network so that pilots can fly between them uh, with the range that's currently available, but also the range that have come in with different aircraft, by the time we've done 70 to 90 sites up to the top of Scotland, probably that will provide the kind of network we need. So it's just 70 to 90, that's not a massive, massive challenge. I am actually a little bit nervous. I didn't think I would be. But this is a second generation aircraft. So the one that Deepak initially flew Robert in was first generation and this one's got a better battery life on it. Yeah, so what is the range? Well, it's about 50 minutes plus a 10 minute contingency. Yeah, the guys are ready with the cameras now, so um, I think we're all good to go. OK, Charlie, we're rolling. Ooh! <laughs> I have never been in a plane this small before. I mean, that feels incredibly simple. Obviously, you've done this yeah. 10 million times. Yeah, yeah. But that was like it was a toy. And also, just with these enormous windows, it, it feels like 
Well, it feels like we're not even in a plane. That we're yeah. just on a chair. Yeah. No, it's actually flying quite smooth today. God, this is absolutely beautiful. So obviously pilots need to see where these charges are and actually help them plan their journeys. Is there any way to integrate those into the you know, digital services that they're already using? Yeah, and into the Squadron app which we've built, which is a pilot subscription service, that allows you to see where charges are, it allows you to book charging, you can actually book aircraft through there. So if you're a school and you have a number of electric aircraft, you can use that to manage your fleet as well and rent it out. So that app is the basis of everything we're doing in terms of integration. And what about ATIS? This is a term that I've heard. Um, the air traffic... Yeah, so air traffic information server. This will be the first thing that will appear for us, for our vault. So, we haven't got one here, but larger airports have them. So, when you start up in taxi, you hear the information about the aerodrome, the runway conditions, runways in use, uh, weather, wind, all that kind of thing. And then, when a charge goes offline at that location, uh, automatically on that information message past the pilots, it says, charging services offline. Oh so, so if you're flying into a larger aerodrome and they've got an ATIS, you can actually uh, hear in advance if the charger is available or not. I mean, you'll be checking it on your app or whatever navigation software you're using. Uh, but in general, you can also hear it on the radio, which is kind of an old school way of doing it, but it's um, all IKEA approved and everything, so it's quite standardized in aviation. Yeah. God, you must have such a good sense of geography of the UK. You actually start to learn the land like you do when you're driving. Yeah. And um, you just know the, uh, especially around the solar, you know where everything is. It's quite difficult to miss the Isle of Wight and know where <laughs> airfields yeah. are and things like that. So is, that, is it more simple to fly an electric plane? Um, a mechanics perspective. Yes, from from flying with the uh, just the you know the, the throttle, you haven't you're not watching things like car heat and your um, engine temperatures and things like that. Ooh, Ooh. Got a gust. <laughs> <laughs> this feels smooth. I've got yeah. high hopes. Yeah. Got hard to see, but anyway. Yeah. But fine, that, that was very smooth. Yeah. So as you've started to have conversations with more and more airfields, what are some of the common challenges that emerge? And what are some of the things that we need in the UK to make this a much more straightforward process? Well, frankly, it's grid. Most of the sites that we speak to, there are challenges around grid, there's costs involved, and we take that on very much on a site-by-site -site basis, and there's no one answer to that. But also, we're at a very early stage in terms of the adoption of electric aircraft. Electric aircraft are coming. If you look at the leasing companies and the companies that are supplying aircraft and the companies that are building aircraft, they are very much coming. I'm acutely aware that the Pippa's Rail is unlikely to whisk you away on a zero emission trip to Lanzarote. And in fact, it won't take you that much further than the New Forest. And maybe using it as a way to showcase the future of electric aviation is a bit like using a Citroen Ami to speculate on the future of electric vehicles. But regardless of that, it is a really useful tool and does help answer some really key questions like, is electric aviation even possible? How do you charge these electric planes? What does the charging network need to look like? And how do all of those bits and pieces come together? However, as the industry does strive to net zero by 2050, we definitely need some bigger electric planes. But as batteries are less energy dense presently than their jet fuel predecessors, it's also forced the industry to think about some more use case specific solutions. For example, the Pipistrel, perfect thing to learn how to fly in, but perhaps things like the Aviation Alice or Lilium Jets or even the Airlander ship could be good for regional flights. Things like hydrogen or hybrid maybe fix the gap for a short haul. And then when it comes to long haul, perhaps there's, that's where things like sustainable aviation fuels and biofuels step in. Although there are definitely a few concerns about how you grow those and their impact. 
Unfortunately, innovation in this space is absolutely booming. There are loads of programs and initiatives, such as, for example, the ARPA-E1K program, which aims to find ways to electrify domestic flights carrying 100 people for 1,000 miles using 1,000 watt hour per kilo batteries. And they're looking at things like superconducting materials, solid state batteries, as well as super advanced propulsion systems. So we've plugged in and that is charging at 22 kilowatts DC charging. Now that might not sound like an enormous amount and actually they have got a 44 kilowatt and a 120 kilowatt charger coming soon. But given that for the electric Pipistrelle it's only got a 20 kilowatt hour battery. So if you know it was really going from zero to 100 that'd be about an hour. Perfect amount of time to go away and have a lovely coffee or some lunch. Now 20 kilowatt hours that would give you about 90 nautical miles of range. So from here in Dunkerswell to almost to Southampton um, or in other words about a 50 minute flight time leaving some reserve as well. Now there are other additional electric um, planes coming out soon such as the Bristol and Diamond and they will have a little bit more range. One of the things that we see is that lots of these airfields tend to be in reasonably remote locations and I can't imagine that they have a ton of power on site. Is that a challenge in terms of deploying DC charging? Well, we have a mix of different sites. In an ideal world, we like a separate grid connection that comes to us for our charging, both car side and air side. Not all sites have that available, and in some cases we've taken from the site supply, which is then submitted to us. However, some sites simply just don't have the power available at all. So here, for example, where we are today at Dunkerswell Aerodrome, we've installed a 300 kilowatt battery system that trickle charges off a small single phase supply and then outputs DC power to the chargers. For DC charging, you need a three phase supply. And for the team at Aerovolt, that presented a bit of a conundrum when it came to Dunkerswell because they only had a single phase supply. So they were in search of a solution and actually they stumbled across Ally. And we have actually featured Ally on the show before, but on our sister channel, the Everything Electric Show. So do make sure to go and check out that episode. But Ally is a stationary energy storage solution in which Four Tesla batteries can be trickle charged from a single phase supply and then provide that DC fast charging over there. So a pretty neat solution and seeing different bits of the fully charged multiverse coming together. Aerobot have the solution for the UK. I guess there's two components to this question. A, is that sort of setting the global standard? And B, are there any intentions to take this across the world? Well, the global standard is established. As I say, people are building aircraft to a standard, people are building charges to a standard, and we're building a network to bring that together. Do we have plans outside the UK? Yes, absolutely. And actually that's moving a lot quicker than we thought it would. So of course Europe and the US and other places we, we're in discussion with already, we have a number of opportunities there. And in Australia, in fact, the state government for Victoria have approached us again about going there to install charges. So, it's moving a lot quicker than we thought it would, even, even at these, this relatively early stage. You're not just going to stop at light aircraft, I'm guessing. What happens next? How do you sort of scale this? Yeah, so Aerovault at the moment, we're building a charging network for essentially the technology that's available, which is small, light aircraft. But we're forming very long-term partnerships with aerodromes to provide charging across the site. So within the scope of what Aerovault want to do and what we will be doing, things like EV toll aircraft, things like drones, that absolutely comes into the scope of what we want to charge. If it goes in the air and it has a battery, we're going to be charging it. So that's it. That's how you charge an electric plane. And you know, the perennial question of what comes first, the electric chargers or the electric vehicles, when it comes to aviation, it looks like it will be the chargers, which is absolutely fantastic in terms of as we get more electric planes, the chargers are there, ready and waiting to make this transition as seamless and as easy as possible.